Hi, I'm your host, Matt Jones, and this is the Real Estate Investing Roadmap Podcast. I want to welcome you to uh, the Foundation Series, episode number five, where we're going to tell you all about investment property loans. These are loans geared specifically toward investors and specifically for investment properties. Now, I covered uh, traditional lending options in in uh, uh, episode two. So if you haven't checked that out, be sure to go back and watch that one. That would be for your house hacking or buying a house that you're going to later turn into a rental, all those things. This is for uh, investment specific loans, and we're going to cover a wide variety of topics. I'm really excited to bring you this information. This is lesser known stuff than uh, your traditional options, and even some investors don't know about all of these. So I'm really excited to uh, you know, increase your, your tools and your tool belt here so that you can go out and do more deals. I've always viewed putting together a real estate deal as a project that you need certain tools to accomplish. Um, and unless you already have tons of cash uh, available, then you're going to need to borrow money. And even if you do have tons of cash available to you, nothing eats capital quite like real estate. Real estate can run through pretty much any pile of cash. And at some point, if you want to keep growing, you want to keep investing, then you're going to need to know how to borrow money. And the more lending options that you're familiar with, the more tools you have, the more deals that you're able to put together. So before we get too far into our journey together, and that's why this is in the foundation series, we're going to make sure that you have the tools you need to get out there and do deals in this environment and to be successful on your real estate journey. Okay, first, I want to tell you about commercial loans. That These are loans that you might find at your local bank or credit union. Personally, I like to use local and regional banks for these kind of loans. Um, you qualify for this type of loan, and it's a, it's a convert commercial loan at, uh, you know, at a traditional bank. You qualify through the income that the property makes rather than your income as a buyer. They may look at you. They may have some minimum requirement. But what they really want to know is, is this property going to earn enough money to pay for itself? Um, the terms on these loans vary, but the format is typically something like this. They're going to want 15 to 30 percent down. And since lending's tightened a little bit, I'm seeing a lot of 25 and 30 percent down. You have a good relationship with them. Uh, the nice thing about using a, a small or local bank or, or a regional bank is that they can work with you a little bit and maybe you could get better terms. But so somewhere between 50 and 30 percent down, they're going to amortize or calculate your payment over 15 to 25 years, but most common like 20. And you'll notice I didn't say 30. Most 30 year loans are going to be traditional residential loans. This is not that. These are more commonly 20. You'll have to find slightly better deals to make them cash flow on a 20 year loan than you would on a 30 year loan. So it puts a little pressure on you, but ultimately it's great for you in the long run because you're going to have a paid off property 10 years faster. Um, another important part of a commercial loan is going to be that it typically has a balloon payment. Most of these come at the end of five years, although that can vary as well. Sometimes it's 10, but you're going to have your payment calculated like you're paying for 20 years, but at the end of five years, you're going to have a balloon payment. Most of the time, you're just going to refinance that. Um, I've personally done some of these, and when I get to the end of the five years, the bank was more than happy to start a new five-year term. It, for the most part, keeps them on uh, flex, keeps them with flexibility when rates rise, like they have recently, to uh, you know not have you locked in for a long time. So, you need to have some exit strategies because of that balloon payment. Because if you were not able to qualify, the bank wasn't willing, and the lending environment wasn't such that you could go out and get a loan with another bank. You could have to pay that loan off, which means one of two things. You have enough cash to do that, or two, you sell the property if you can't refinance it. So when I'm on a loan like this, I'm definitely looking six months to a year out at what do I need to do to get this loan off my books before we hit the five-year balloon payment. Um, my experience rate-wise is that these run one to one and a half percent above what you might find on a conventional loan for a home that you are going to live in. 
Um, right now with our rate environment kind of high, I'm not even sure it's that much higher, but it usually is a little bit higher than um, what you would pay on, on a conventional mortgage rate. So loan type number one, a commercial loan through a local or regional bank. Okay, next let's talk about DSCR loans. This loan type was, I don't wanna say unheard of, but it was, it was much less common five years ago. Now they're starting to be advertised and people are starting to hear about them and use them. But even as an investor myself and someone who works with a lot of investors, this is not a loan type that I see a lot of people using. Um, so DSCR stands for debt service coverage ratio. Like the commercial loan we just discussed, they don't care about you so much as the buyer. Um, these, they'll probably have a minimum credit score, but what they want to know is can the property pay for itself? So they're typically looking for a certain number. And I'll give you an example. If the net operating income of a property was $1,250 and the payment is $1,000, then you divide the 1250 net operating income by the 1000 to get 1.25 your debt service coverage, coverage ratio is 1.25. So if the lender tells you their minimum is 1.25 used to be really common. I, th I think some people are doing it at 1.0 or at various numbers now, but um, that's how you do that math. So there, the minimum credit score that I've seen most often has been around 640. So it, it's not super, super high. Um, they typically don't take any real information on, I mean, they take your information, but they don't really qualify you. It's, it's very, very much about the property. Um, they can sometimes offer faster closing times. Um, there's not a limit to the number of DSCR loans you can have. Sometimes you can do portfolio, learn, uh, portfolio loans. They, I am seeing them mostly charge points. So the uh, closing costs might be a little bit more expensive than the commercial loans we just talked about. The other nice thing, where deals are tougher to find and tougher to make the numbers work is DSCR loans do typically offer 30 year terms and they're fixed. They can be fixed, you know, like anything, they're going to have terms that vary, but I see, um, you know, I, I see products offered where you can have a 30 year term and still have a fairly competitive rate, maybe a little bit higher than what I'm seeing at commercial for commercial loans with a bank, definitely higher than a conventional loan. Um, down payment requirements, usually 25% if you're doing a purchase, 30% uh, equity if you're doing a cash out refi. Um, it's definitely one of the less known and less utilized tools, like I said, but it's one you want to learn about. Um, there are, are quite a few lenders out there that do them, and I think some of the terms with some lenders are much better than others, so you may have to shop a little bit more. But type number two, DSCR, debt service coverage ratio loans. Okay, the third and final loan type I want to talk to you about is there's actually several things that are going to follow under this umbrella, but private lending is, is what I would call it. I think what is generally referred to private lending can kind of be anything that doesn't fall under the categories or guidelines of a conventional loan or of the other investment loans we just talked about. Owner financing and hard money loans are two of the most well-known uh, types of, of private loans, so we're going to jump into those first. Okay, owner financing is when the owner of the property agrees to carry any portion of the sales price as a note. They're going to take a loan for it, the terms from you, uh, the terms are completely negotiable. So you can agree to pay them back in, in one year with a balloon, you can do interest-only payments, you can agree to amortize it over 30 years, um, it's whatever you can negotiate with the seller. They're really great because there's not a lot of documentation that has to be done. The closing costs are generally low. Um, you can do them in a first position loan, which is like a, any of the loan types we've talked about before now would be a first position, meaning they have the first rights to the property. Sometimes you'll also see owner financing though happen as a second position loan, meaning you might have a lender who would loan you 80% and the seller be willing to finance 15 or 20 of the remaining 20% to help you have a low or no down payment deal. Um, for a variety of reasons, owner financing is loved by buyers, but for an equal variety, it's a great option for some sellers. So the thing with sellers is 
there are some constraints on your side for tax purposes. So I'd highly recommend uh, consulting with your attorney or a CPA, just making sure you don't go afoul of the Dodd-Frank Act and that you understand the tax consequences if you're a seller considering on owner financing. Okay, the next type of private loan or what I would call a private loan that I wanna to talk to you about is hard money loans. Now, most people are familiar with hard money loans. Um, they're, they're aptly named because the terms can be pretty rough. Uh, usually you'll see double digit interest rates, um, points up front, uh, quick, uh, you know, short, short times before you have a balloon payment due. Usually a hard money loans not for more than a year. Now, those are the bad things, but here's the deal. If you found a good enough deal that you can factor those, the hard money loan in and it's still profitable, awesome. Don't let it stop you. That's what the hard money loan is there for. You find a great deal and it's your only source of money. Do the deal, right? So here are some of the, the important things about hard money and why sometimes it is worth the, the high cost. Um, one, it, it can fund pretty quickly. It's definitely faster than a conventional loan. It's generally going to be faster than a, a DSCR or commercial loan like we just talked about. Um, they can also, uh, which is, this is, is not as common in your other loan types. They will fund a portion of the renovation loan frequently. Um, requirements for borrowers vary, but uh, there are several companies that do hard money loans for completely brand new investors, which some of the other loan types might not offer. Um, they are going to do some due diligence on your deal. They're going to make sure that they agree that it's a deal. And they are going to want to make sure you have some skin in the game. So you're probably not going to find a no down payment or super low down payment hard money loan. But that said, I, I regularly see them advertised with as low as 15% down and them funding the renovation. So a hard money loan is a great tool to have in your tool belt for when you come across that deal that's right and you don't have a nice, easy, uh, you know, more affordable financing route and you don't have a lot of time. So hard money is great when you need it, but don't go use it all the time. Look at the other options first and then hard money. Okay, the last type of loan I wanna mention here is what we would refer to as just a private loan. Um, did you know that anybody can loan money against a property and take a mortgage? So sometimes that's done. Um, a private loan is a lot like a hard money loan. What separates the two is the terms. Um, the private money loan terms are usually much more attractive. Lower down payment costs, lower rate. Um, why are they more attractive? Why would somebody give you better rates than, than what you're seeing on hard money? Usually there's a relationship there. So often private loans are going to come from, you know, a friend, a relative, an acquaintance, somebody that you've done business with before. Um, I actually have an investor that I've worked with quite a few times over the years that his deals are primarily funded by an older couple who just wants to beat the rates they could, could get in a CD. Um, I don't know what they're charging him today, but when CD rates were low, he was closing on deals with 3% uh, interest rates for private money and no closing cost. So you know, they're not all that sweet. Um, I, I wish they were, but they're, the terms are anything that you as the borrower can negotiate with the person loaning the money. So again, private money loans are generally, uh, they're available to you as a result of relationships that you've built. So take care of people, do business the right way, um, you know, talk to people about real estate. Don't just let them know that you do real estate, but talk about the details sometimes. And some, sometimes private money options will come up, uh, you know, just in conversation so it, it's a really a win-win for both parties when you can find somebody who wants to get a better return on their money and you as the borrower, obviously, this could be one of the very best loan types out there for you. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground today. So don't hesitate to come back to this episode from time to time because to do more real estate deals and better real estate deals, you need to master not only the different types of loans available to you, but the right application for each. I want to thank you so much for joining me on another episode of the Real Estate Investing Roadmap podcast. This is the foundation series. I hope you'll keep tuning in as we try to set a good solid foundation for you to go out 
and be a successful real estate investor or to be more successful with the investing that you're already doing. Next week, we're going to have a really powerful episode. I think it's probably the single most powerful strategy as far as being a springboard for you as an investor and a springboard for your wealth. And that is the Burr strategy. Uh, not super easy to execute in today's market, but still very doable and still, I believe, the most powerful strategy in real estate investing. Thanks so much. Be sure to like and subscribe and uh, interact with me on socials. And you know, I'm happy to answer your real estate questions. Happy to talk real estate anytime. All right. Tune in next week.